One of the primate behaviors that we focus on most, especially in thinking about the fossils and the skeletal variation they display, is locomotor behaviors. Locomotion reflects the fundamental ways in which organisms move around within their environment. It also is a primary shaper of the morphology of primates. In order to think about primate locomotion and its relationship to morphology in the primates, we need to begin thinking about how primates actually use their limbs, how they use their body, how they use their hands and feet to move about in the environment. Limb proportions, the relative length of the forelimb and hind limb, for example, are a very good reflection in primates of the kind of different locomotor behaviors they engage in. As we've already talked about, apes engage in a diverse kind of locomotor behaviors. The siamang next to me, for example, is a good example of a true brachiator. Brachiation reflects movement associated with the forelimbs, swinging through the trees, basically. The siamangs and their relative the gibbons occupy high canopy environments in Southeast Asia. In those environments, that kind of locomotor behavior works very well for them. It also is evident in the skeleton of the gibbon and siamang. They have very long forelimbs and very reduced hind limbs. This reflects a forelimb dominated locomotor strategy for the gibbons and siamangs. Now this is unusual for primates, although most apes tend to show some degree of suspensory ability or ability to use their forelimbs in locomotor, primates in general are much more hind limb focused in terms of their locomotor strategy. Hind limb dominated locomotor behavior is reflective of the fact that many primates engage in vertical climbing and clinging and leaping from tree branch to tree branch. This is activities that involve the hind limbs, and therefore we see characteristic proportions between the hind limbs and forelimbs in these kinds of organisms. The quadrupedal apes, such as chimpanzees and gorillas, engage in oftentimes knuckle walking. Now when thinking about that kind of knuckle walking behavior, again, there's distinctive kinds of morphology that we see going along with this. Part of this includes relatively long forelimbs relative to the hind limbs, although not nearly as long as those in the gibbons and siamangs. This gives them the right proportions to move about quadrupedally, either in a branch or on the ground, and still maintain a field of vision appropriate for their actions. Now humans as locomotors, again, are strange in the sense that we're obligate bipeds. We rely entirely on our hind limbs for locomotion, unless you're a circus clown or an acrobat performing in a, a show. As such, our morphology reflects this exclusive dominance of our hind limbs. This includes the relative proportions of our legs relative to our forearms, although humans actually have somewhat elongated arms as well, but for different purposes. It also is true that our hands and feet reflect these different locomotor behaviors. So your foot, the human foot, for example, is very much specialized for locomotion and for bipedal locomotion. Our large toe is in line with the rest of our toe, and our foot in general is fairly immobile. The bones themselves are interlocked in a way to give support during locomotor behaviors and bipedalism, but without giving much flexibility. So we can't use our foot for much other than for walking. The primates, including the gibbons and siamangs, but also the chimpanzees and gorillas, have opposable, th not just thumbs, but also have opposable big toes, giving their foot the ability to grip onto a branch or a trunk as they climb throughout the forest in the arboreal environment they occupy. This is a feature that's lost in the context of human evolution. So locomotor behaviors give us some indication of what kind of morphology we might expect to see in a fossil primate. Thinking about the fossils then, the morphology we see, the relative proportions of the limbs, the kind of morphology we see in the hand, the wrist, the foot, the ankle, tells us something about the behavior and the locomotor behavior of these fossil primates, which in turn tells us also something about what kinds of environments they occupy.